outback Australia, an unforgiving territory, and a land of amazing creatures, where sometimes nature needs a helping hand. These are the everyday heroes bound by a single mission to save wildlife anywhere, anytime. On Outback Wildlife Rescue, a bat on the wire. The more he's trying to get himself out, the more tangled he gets. Can Lisa rescue him before he tears himself to pieces? One of the world's biggest sea snakes. They've got 72 hours to save his life. And a domestic pet nightmare cleaning a croc's paddling pool. Australia's wildlife is as diverse as its landscape. From the tropical Queensland coast to the Northern Territory and monsoonal Darwin and the nearby Kakadu wetlands and on 1,500 kilometres to the red deserts of Alice Springs and beyond. In suburban Darwin, local reptile wrangler Chris Peabody might have bitten off more than he can chew. Though it's a bad time to mention chewing, this cuddly critter is a much-loved pet, but her pond is long overdue for a cleanup. Her pen is filled up with dirt, and her owners of her can't get in there and uh, catch her out just because they're not, they're not crocodile people. I mean, they've looked after her immaculately, but after 20 years of being in that pond, it's filled up with dirt. So we're going to catch her out and uh, clean out her pond and make it a bit better for her. It's perfectly legal to own a pet croc in Darwin, although you'd have to wonder why you'd want to. Try taking this for walkies and you'd lose an arm. To clean this pond, they've first got to persuade two and a half metres of saltwater crocodile to come out. And after 20 years living here, she doesn't want to. She just knows this pond. There's 20 years of experience sitting at the bottom of that mud. She knows how to play the game. This is also the first time anyone's ever been in with her. So it's, she's, she's a little bit spooked, obviously, and uh, we're just trying to not, uh, not have to go and actually drag her out. There's only one thing for certain here. A croc's not coming quietly. In Biwa, Queensland, the Australian Wildlife Hospital has to be ready to deal with just about anything. On a given day, their patients might include anything from a cute and cuddly koala to this, which is certainly not cuddly. It's a Stokes sea snake armed with a venom many times more toxic than land snakes. This one was washed in uh, at Majimba Beach. Uh, this morning we've got quite strong uh, onshore winds, so we tend to find that uh, anything that's sort of sick and floating out in the open ocean, we get a belt of strong onshore winds, seabirds, sea turtles and uh, sea snakes quite often get, get washed in. A washed up snake is a sick snake. The mystery is what's making him sick. He's got quite a, quite a few barnacles and stuff along him as well, which sort of a little indication that he's been sick for a little while. Vet Amber Gillett has the job of finding out what's wrong, but not before the dangerous end is tucked away. Snakes can't go backwards, so he can't pull his head out. Amber knows they don't have much time. Even healthy sea snakes can die after a few days in captivity. But this one's sick, so at most she's got 72 hours to fix him. Just going to palpate all along his body and just make sure there's no masses or lumps um, in his abdomen. Probably not going to like this very much. <laughs> He's got a bit of faeces in there too. Watch out for that. <laughs> I'll pop him in some water and just see how he's moving because they, because they're not meant to be on land. You can't tell whether they're um, neurological or not when you've got them out on the floor. Neurological is vet speak for having some sort of disease that's affecting his brain. Amber will get a better idea of what's wrong with him by watching him in the water. Oh, 
there, just watch yourself in case he... He's not he swimming him. well. I would have liked to have seen him submerge a little bit more. So he's, he's floating quite high in the water, which indicates he's probably got some gas sitting somewhere in the body. Um, I'll have to take an x-ray just to see uh, where that gas is building up. So we're going to have to do a few more tests on him, some blood work, some more x-rays. He'll certainly have to stay in hospital with us. The snake's illness is still a mystery, and time is running out. At the Ark Animal Hospital in Darwin, manager Lisa's taken a call. A fruit bat is caught in a fence and needs help fast. It's really critical that we get to them as quickly as possible. The stress is just something awful, but the damage that they do to themselves while they're hanging on the wire is really awful as well. Fruit bats are also known as flying foxes. Unlike other bats, they don't have sonar. They rely on their smell and good eyesight to find food. But this one clearly didn't see the fence. OK, he's really, really caught up. He doesn't look too bad. You can see the skin flap up there. What I'm doing is I'm covering all the barbed wire that I can get to in the towel so that we can uh, see how he's all hooked up in here. He has a wingspan of nearly a metre. But right now, that's a problem. He can't free those big wings from the barbed wire. He's trying to get himself out, and the more he's trying to get himself out, the more tangled he gets. So he's actually not just caught in one spot, he's caught in numerous spots. Make your mouth all worse. Lisa needs to be delicate, but she needs to be fast too. The longer she takes, the worse he'll be. She's got to get him out. In Biwa, the Stokes sea snake is being prepared for X-ray. Amber suspects he's got an infection or a blockage in his intestines. They can't take any chances. He's highly venomous. And so the dangerous end is well contained. He was sort of floating from this upper one third of his body down to about sort of midline or a little bit lower. So I'm just going to start around here where the stomach is and uh, I'll then get another section of the tail a little bit further. So there'll, there'll be a, a few x-rays. Um, on him, but hopefully it'll give us a little bit of an indication where that gas is. There's a myth that sea snakes can't open their mouths wide enough to deliver a fatal bite. Given a chance, this one would prove that wrong. So this is um, the front half of his body. So this was the first x-ray that we took. You can see in here there's big dark black area, that's all gas sitting in, I think it's probably in his gastrointestinal tract, so up in the stomach and the intestine. And then that's the second x-ray, which is a little bit further down. Um, and there's more of it that's going down here, right down to the end of the tail. So it certainly looks like it's in the intestinal tract, but I can't see any blockage. There may be a little narrowing down here, but no distinct blockage that I'm seeing on those x-rays. Amber's going to pump him full of antibiotics to get rid of any infection, and she'll give him a drug to unblock his intestine. It's those barnacles. He's not real happy about me pulling them off either, so I think I'll leave most of them. But time's still against them. Another couple of days in captivity, and he'll start going downhill anyway. Sea snakes are delicate at the best of times. In Darwin, the fruit bat is still struggling to get free. His mouth is going to be all cut open because he's been trying to release himself. Lisa is starting to stress too. I'm going to try and release him as much as possible without having to cut him. As fast as she unhooks one part of his wings, he snags another. He's actually just hanging on there. <laughs> Come on, baby, I need you to let go so that I can get you out. Go 
got you. We've got you. Oh, got you. Oh, they've got very long reaching wings. It's okay, sweetie. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. He'd be pretty scared, pretty annoyed, pretty sore. You can see that he's got some holes there. He's actually fared better than some that we've taken off the fence and he's still alive so that's a bonus in itself and I'm really happy that I didn't actually have to cut him to get him off. He's free but the fruit bat is not out of trouble yet. Lisa needs to get him back to the surgery to check out the damage. Chris is still trying to persuade the pet crocodile to come out of her pond so they can clean it. But she's got other ideas. Help is on the way. Arc vet Stephen Cutter. Better late than never. He's got a briefcase full of tranquilizers for the croc. Yeah, you didn't walk behind. That's all right. Go for it. To get a tranquilizer in, they're going to have to drag her out first. They'll attach a rope to her snout, and then it gets tricky. Oh, just drag her up. Drag her up and jump. Jamie, get the tape. No, we can take it straight off. So, I don't want to go over that. Do you want to take that rope off? We can leave the tape on. You want to leave that rope on for the release? Yeah, put it here. Never too much tape. Yep, you can give it the jab. This will help uh, basically oh, paralyse her so she can't move and also um, make her forget about what's going on and, and fall asleep. With a family pet as lethal as this, it's the only opportunity anyone will have to give her a pat. Now she's sedated, Stephen gives her a medical. Just looking for sort of any damage. Um, she rolled herself pretty hard on the concrete. Um, there's a little bit of blood there just near her nose. Um, so there's a good chance she's bitten herself in a couple of places. Just there, there's a little bit of bark off. She's overweight, she's quite fat. She's got these huge big sort of fat pads here, here and everywhere. She's obviously been very well fed um, and because she probably hasn't had to do much exercise either to get her food, um, she's showing the signs of a good life. Turns out 20 years of doing nothing but eating has made her fat. Who'd have thought? And so the hard work begins as the fat lady sleeps. With the crocodile having a snooze, Stephen's back at the Ark Animal Hospital, where there's a much less dangerous patient waiting. The fruit bat, caught in the wire. It's time to see just how badly hurt he is. Basically, you're just going to check his wings. You can see that their wing is basically sort of a, a stretched out hand. You can see the fingers here, um, and that's the thumb there. Um, and then, um, and they actually sort of use that as, they actually use it as a hand as well as a wing, so they're quite so sort of clever. Um, and, that, and it's sort of just a skin membrane. It's quite thin. You can see the blood vessels uh, running through there, carrying the blood. That one's fine. There's no damage on that one at all. Let's get on, on the other side. It's okay, sweetie. We're just going to have a look at your wings. This wing here Make is... sure that it's all all right, okay? We'll have a look at this wing. Okay, that, yeah, this wing is damaged. You can see there's a few holes here, there and everywhere. Oh, I was so happy. I didn't have to cut him off. Yeah. There's a little hole down there by his elbow, just there. This is very thin skin. I'm sure that it hurts, but these holes will heal very well, um, quite quickly, within a couple of weeks. Um, they don't need to be stitched or anything. They, um, they seem to be um, remarkably good at healing. So um, because the structure of the wing is intact, all the bones are intact, um, he should still actually be able to fly quite well. Sting a little bit. Thanks to Lisa's quick rescue, the fruit bat has had a lucky escape. The price of his tangle with the fence? Just injections to fight tetanus and infection. Hello. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. He's developed quite a liking for Lisa. 
If he can stay out of further tangles, she'll be happy to set him free. At the Wildlife Hospital in Biwa, it's crunch time for the Stokes sea snake. He's been recovering overnight. Amber's hoping the drugs she gave him have done the trick and he'll be showing signs of recovery. It's not good. He seems even sicker than when he arrived. Mate, I want to see you sink. He's hardly even moving. But then... See a little death roll. There we go. It's a bit better. He certainly looks a lot better than yesterday, but I'm still concerned about this rolling that he's doing. He, his head seems very well orientated and he's obviously wanting to get up the sides, which we think is fairly normal. Apparently they, they do that sort of thing up the side of boats. He's certainly improved from yesterday though, I'd say. That's a bit better. It's a great result. He's not out of the woods yet, but if he keeps improving, release might only be 24 hours away. Chris and his mates are still digging through 20 years worth of crocodile leftovers. We've moved probably, I don't know, close to a ton of sand out of here. Um, and just a whole pile of different bones from chickens and beef and hopefully only chickens and bits of beef. <laughs> um, so she's obviously feeding well. Um, there's probably a good, I don't know, two foot of sand in here. So we've almost doubled the depth of our pond, which means that she's able to get down escape from the heat of the day. They've dug the pond out, but now they've got to fill it, and the garden hose is not going to cut it. Now, Chris is a member of the volunteer firefighting brigade and is clearly not a man who minds calling in a favour. Finally finished filling up the pond. It's taken almost 3,000 litres, so it's a, a lot bigger than I thought, which uh, is good for the crocodile. We just still got a really nice deep pond um, and lots of fresh water. Uh, it's been a big help to have the fire brigade come in and uh, and fill it up. So uh, we're just lucky to have the volunteers' assistance. So now the important part: get the croc back in here. Ready? Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three, look. Stephen is back to supervise. But with the croc waking up and her restraints coming off, releasing her promises to be the most dangerous job of the day. Yep. Swing around, off the rope. Right, and we better lower. Okay. We're just going to uh, systematically undo the, the features that are securing her, which is uh, the blindfold, so she can't see with the last thing, the rope on the jaws, and uh, then we'll be standing up and uh, leaving her be. Hopefully she'll make her own way into the water if uh, everything goes right. It's been a long day and everyone's exhausted, but relax now and the croc could make them pay. Leave the blindfold on, just take the tape away. We can lift the, lift the head up. Just take the tape off the bottom. Yeah, once this tape comes off, guys, that's when you guys need to move. When, I, guys, when we come up, we're going that way. All right? Okay, I'll come. Okay. Here you go, in girl. Come on. 
All that's left is to persuade her to dip in a toe. Come on. There you go. There you go. There we go. And there we go. One croc at the bottom of the pond. No one got injured. The croc didn't get injured. She's down the bottom now going, oh my God, how deep is this? And uh, another job done. Off the Queensland coast, the Stokes sea snake is getting his chance at freedom. Even in this bag, he can probably smell the sea. Right there, little buddy. Time to go back to the ocean. But will he be able to swim? I'm, I'm really happy with that. That's, that's really good. So far, so good. He still looks a bit puffy, but the drugs should fix that over the next few days. He's looking really good now, uh, a heck of a lot better than what he was when we picked him up off the beach um, a day or two ago. Uh, he was very, very flat and um, you know, very little energy. Now he's, um, he's going really well. The wildlife hospital has done its job. And now, back in the ocean, there's a good chance he'll make a full recovery. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he's a lot happier now to be back out in the open ocean. This is, this is where they belong. Another one for the album. Plenty of native fruit trees around the place, plenty of flowers, possums. Stephen and Lisa have some farewells to say too. He's listening all his ears are flapping. Yeah, but I hope he's paying attention. After tangling with a barbed wire fence, the fruit bat can count himself lucky to be ready for release. This is a great place for fruit bats. Um, there's plenty of, of large native trees, there's plenty of native fruit trees and blossoms. There'll be fruit bats coming through here shortly. He'll be able to join them up and, and head back home. So this is a great spot to be released. Yeah. You can fly. No. It's the best part of the job. Um, it's always great when we get to return something to the wild. Um, this guy's got a really good chance of success. I feel really emotionally charged over this little guy. He's up there in the trees, and how much happier can I be? It's just lovely. Probably a little bit of time is all that, that he needs. He's just so beautiful and now he's at home out there and going to go back to his family. And he's certainly an exceptional bat. Yeah, smarter than the average bat. <laughs>